Can you walk us through sort of what you think that the foundational movement patterns or strength pillars that you think every dancer should master in their sort of training journey, and then how these translate into better ballet technique? Uh, I think every dancer should master the big movements, the big exercises, and being prepared for any kind of choreography that's thrown their way. I don't care if you only have a double in your solo. I want to see you be able to stand on one leg and do other things with your arms and your head and um, train in a way that's going to get you prepared for a triple pirouette somewhere else or um, a different kind of leap. It doesn't matter what where what position your legs are in, but do you have the foundation to really push off the floor and jump high enough so that your legs can go wherever you want them to go? And um, so usually that comes from more of like compound exercises the, the and the movements that are like those foundational patterns like your squat, lunge, push, pull, uh, single leg, carry, rotation. I think I said them all. But all of those ones that are going to be like that foundation of every every sort of movement you do is going to fall into one of those categories. And I see a big mistake that a lot of especially younger dancers make and with a lot of the trend of what we might consider dance conditioning right now is doing an exercise that is so hyper specific to dance that we might as well just be dancing or you know doing bar with a band around our knees and calling it strength training it's like that's that's great if you want to do that and you want to do that with a band but it's not going to build you strength for the things that you need it to it's probably just going to lead to more injuries and um muscle imbalances because you're not changing the way you you move you're just making it a little hard on yourself and hoping for the best so i uh, i try to differentiate that as well like we will always do some dance specific exercises and that's included in my curriculum but we're always going to start with the foundation of those eight movement patterns as well yes that is also true and just kind of made me think about, again, like, again, I keep going back to my own experience, which is, you know, one person, but I have a feeling it's a little common. No, still, yeah. It's just, you you know, like, we, we like you said, get so hyper-focused on these specific moves, like steps or movements or, you know, pirouettes, tendu, grand bat ma, like, and how can I make that one thing better? And like you said, like at a resistance band, at an ankle weight, like, okay, this is how we'll get stronger doing and and which, you know, there there are definitely some benefits to that. But I think, you know, balancing out all the dance training with, you know, some, you know, just strength training, like which maybe you do execute, you know, a lunge in a parallel position, which, you know, you wouldn't do in ballet, but to kind of balance out all the muscles around the hips um, that, you know, and maybe work them differently than you do in ballet class. I think it has so many benefits to just kind of, again, making it a more well-rounded, comprehensive approach to, you know, just improving your strength overall just as a person like as a dancer yes as like a regular person yes and then combine that together and yeah so I think that's that's great and then also what was I gonna say yeah just the using the big muscle groups like complex movements yeah that's all excellent and something you said Oh, about, yeah, if you maybe you only have to do a double, but let's try to like do more than that. It just made me think back to when, you know, we would do fuete turns. And like one of my teachers always said, like, if you need to do 32 fuetes on the stage, you need to be able to do 34 or 30, 32 on the stage. You need to be able to do 64 in the studio. Uh, so, yeah, it's kind of like just planning ahead for things like, you know, not being again, not being so specific, but like, you know, so in that, in that case, you know, you need a lot of endurance and strength to do 32 fuetes and a coda at the end of a pas de deux. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think just just being able to think about things not so specific, but more like, you know, big picture is very helpful. Yeah. And that's hard. So that's all hard for a lot great. of dancers when they're in the technique and they are, you know, being nitpicky about everything that their body's doing or their where their progress is out with things as well. So um, and I wanted to just reiterate the what you said about um doing more things in parallel versus turnout especially for ballet there's i've worked with a few dancers that are in 
pre-professional ballet training conservatories and ballet is the only thing that they're doing and we we rarely do anything in turnout in our sessions it's like we're we are mostly in parallel most of the time like i would say i would say close to like 90% of our session is in parallel and then if they want to work on turnout like we work on turning out and turning in as well which they just think I'm crazy at that point. So like, why would I practice turning in? <laughs> um, but I think that's so important because that goes back to the muscular imbalances bit as well. Yes. And it's actually, I don't know, I find it, having danced my whole life, I'm, I found parallel to be harder. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, like I my, my balance is, I don't know, maybe it's just, again, it's, I'm so used to doing things turned out. But I know like, years ago when I took my first yoga class, I mean, I was, it was like major struggle bus <laughs> trying to balance in these simple positions, but just because I didn't have that turnout and so I was not used to it at all. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of value in doing exercises in parallel or even turned in, like you Definitely. said, to kind of balance everything out. 